Welcome to the series. This is where we learn how to build custom AI agents with the latest large language models like OpenAI's GPT-40, etc., and the latest LangChain, LangGraph, LangSmith, and Python. Here, for the first time, we'll be getting into LangGraph workflow, which eventually will lead us to build multi-agent orchestration frameworks. This can get very complex very quickly. So we'll take baby steps. This video is the first part of a two-part series within the main series, focusing on just building our first graph with LangGraph. In this video, we'll have a full architectural walkthrough of a LangGraph workflow. We will build our first graph. We will visualize the graph in multiple formats. And finally, we will build and run a simple chatbot using that graph. In the next video, we will augment that chatbot with tools and memory. Now let's go to a diagram that will help us understand the LangGraph architecture. All right, so this is what a LangGraph workflow should look like. Every agent or function are called a node here, and there are edges that connects the nodes. There could be two types of edges, one conditional edge and the other one is a normal edge. Normal edge just basically connects two you know, simple function or agents or two nodes. And conditional agents, on the other hand, can connect multiple nodes or agents conditionally, right? So talking about nodes, like I said, uh, the nodes doesn't have to be agents. They can be any sorts of functions. In our example, um, we will use the chatbot function as a node, and there will also be tool nodes. Basically, these are going to be the tools. It could be a search tool, could be API query tool, or in this case, maybe a SQL uh, query tool that makes a query to the database, right? And these are the end nodes. This is how we usually and the workflow. This is where the node knows that my job is done, time to reply back. It goes all the way back to the user. So this is a, let's say, a customer service scenario. So user comes in, talks to our customer service agent. Our customer ser service agent then greets the customer and takes these uh, requests by the customer and sends this to a conditional edge. And here, the decision is made which way to go. So for example, we have a general info agent. We have a customer issue resolution agent and order status info agent. So if this is a regular product-related FAQ type question, then this guy takes over, replies back, and we're done with it, right? But in case this is a, a issue related to requiring a resolution for example this could be a this could be a positive review by a customer or a negative review about a product or customer just wants to talk to a human agent this is an escalation issue right so that's where node 3 or our customer issue resolution agents take over and his job would be to categorize that request positive negative or escalation and then hands over to our feedback generation or an escalation agent. And this guy, depending on the category, uh, the emotion of the client, whatever, is going to create a feedback and send it back all the way to the client. Or if, if this is an escalation issue, then it will uh, just tell the client, hey, uh, wait for a few minutes while our human agent takes over. Meanwhile, he will send like let's an email to a, to the or a text message to the uh, human agent. Then the human agent can take over, right? Now, last but not least, our order status info agent. In case the customer is inquiring about their order status, this guy will take that and let's say he will ask the customer, "Hey, uh, give us an order ID." Given an order ID, node two will then talk to a tool node. Let's say this could be then a SQL agent, as we have built before in the previous video. So using that ID, that tool node will call a database, 
They may send the SQL query to a database asking for the uh, status and get the status fit to him, node two, and node two then reaches the end of the flow, replies back to the agent. So besides nodes and agents, what we also uh, need to learn from here is that a state machine, as soon as this first conversation begins, I mean, beginning of the graph, as you will see when we go to the code, that we start with a state machine, which, which is basically the entire uh, conversation cycle, uh, deep, you know, including the interagent communication, et cetera. Everything is usually handled using a state machine in the line graph so that everyone is aware of what's going on, right? Sort of like a chat history type situation. But problem with that is that that is maintained in a memory. So it is not persisted, right? So that's when a persisting memory comes in handy, uh, which we will tackle in our next video. So that memory will be written to a actual database so that even if there is a some sort of a, a disconnection happens, that communication still go on depending on that chat history in that SQL database. That is called a permanent memory, right? All that being said, now we are ready to start coding our first graph. Then we'll visualize it and we will run a chatbot using that. All right, so this is where we're gonna build our first line graph chatbot. And these are the steps we're gonna follow. First, we in, will install the necessary libraries. Then we'll set up our OpenAI key environment variable. Then load up all the libraries, build our graph, visualize the graph, and finally create a chatbot using that graph and run it to test it, okay? That being said, Let's get started right here. So these are the libraries we're going to be needing. Langchain, OpenAI, Community, Checkpoint SQLite, which we will use in the next video for memory, Force Lang Graph, and Langchain, the latest version. And there you go. This is the latest version we're using here, 0.3.4. Okay. Now let's uh, grab the OpenAI key. Now, here I am, as usual, using uh, a function from Google Colab, user data dot get this environment variable. And this is usually stored right here as a secret. And uh, that being done, let's check out our libraries we need. So here we are bringing in the state graph. And remember the state machine I told you about? So this is the one. This is where we actually start building everything with. And these two are coming from the Python types, the data types. I mean, these are annotated, uh, type dict. These uh, classes will help us create our uh, data types, you know, for our, you know, messaging that will eventually we will store in our uh, state graph. And uh, here is the land graph message, add message. And this is to handle all the messaging all the messaging between human machine and machine to machine, right? And of course, we all know about this one, chat open AI coming from Langchain open AI, right? So now let's go build the graph. Okay, so remember the message typing we talked about? So this is where we're creating the state message type using the type dict as the parent class. And we annotate our message like a List and we'll use this function function add messages. And then we create a variable called graph builder and invoke our state graph and pass along the state. This is the beginning of creating the actual graph. And of course, we create our model using chat open AI and use GPT 4.0 mini temperature 0.5. And uh, then this will be our chatbot function. I mean, this could, might as well be an agent. I mean, this is something what we're gonna use as a node, right? As you can see in the very next line, let's make it larger a little. 
the very next line we use graph builder dot add node and chatbot chatbot this function right here and this is the name of our node and since this is a simple node so we just have a simple starting point and any point declared right here we don't need, really need to uh, use that end node to finish it we will see that eventually you know if those are coming uh, then we will where where we will have uh, multiple nodes connecting and talking to each other etc but not this one like i said before we are taking baby steps right so after all that said and done we create our graph using graph builder dot compile so let's run this one boom so this is what our compiled graph looks like but this doesn't tell us much right so that's why let's go visualize it so here we are bringing in the ipython library and we're taking uh, image and display from there and within that display function we are telling it that we need to visualize the graph as an image and this is the function that line graph gives us to visualize it so let's run that oh there you go start start node end node chatbot our main node right? so this is like a image based visualization right so in case uh, you know you need uh, another type another way so that's why we bring in uh, this Randolph library to show that we can have another representation which is based on ascii characters so let's run that oh see that's what it looks like start chatbot end as i mentioned before we're going to do create something very simple at this point because this is just the beginning that being said let's go create our chatbot all right here it's a basic uh, infinite loop and here we're taking the uh, user's input and uh, in case uh, you want to get out of that infinite loop we have uh, these keywords like you know quit exit by or q that will help us break out or you know the loop or end the chatbot right uh, saying goodbye so that's how it begins but once we get into that loop this is what we invoke i mean of course you know graph is a runnable sequence so we can either use invoke or you can use dot stream right here in this case we're going to you know run it using a dot stream and uh, this is our dictionary message user and this is where we're going to use that user input as questions and we're going to receive the answers from event dot values we're going to receive them one by one and uh, display them like this value messages negative one means the very last one and dot content will give us will get us just the actual answers nothing in between okay and this will uh, create a nice little uh, line dividing the answers so let's run this all right so let's ask who is from and remember this is our first chatbot using line graph all right so it answered nicely now let's see let's ask who is running in usa election 2024 enter look at that see this is a problem see it still thinks that joe biden is running right so this shows that uh, since its training is behind and it has no internet connection or research ability so it is stuck in the past right and this is where we're going to introduce a tool to this one so that it can search through the internet you know in the next video we're going to bring in a tabby search tool so that uh, it can use and get us the latest info and one more thing to show let's say if i just say just tell me more about this see this will show you that it doesn't have the memory it needs we're just not saying what we're talking about we're just asking tell me more about this so now it, it is not able to uh, you know tell us anything because it doesn't know what this is because it doesn't have the memory 
So this is where we're going to also add a SQL uh, SQLite based memory to enhance our chatbot in our next video. So two things coming, a tool node and a physical memory in our next bot, the next video. So right for now, let's say bye. And we get out with goodbye. As I mentioned before, we're going to take baby steps, right? So this is the structure of our first graph. And we just used it to make a chatbot out of it. And on the next video, we're going to go ahead and add memory and tool nodes so that its capabilities are enhanced. With that, I conclude this video. Until next time, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.